All right, so I was driving home today, and I got these three codes come up on my first-gen Scion XB. A PO302, a PO300, and a PO304. These are all misfire codes here. In addition, the check engine light, the track light, and the VSC light came on. Ignore the other lights for now because the car's turned off. Now, this car's been having a little bit of misfire issues. It's had a pending misfire code for a little while now. I've replaced the plugs, replaced the coils, and it still has been running rich and hasn't been having as much power as it should. So about a week ago, I ordered new fuel injectors for it. I've been delaying putting them in, been waiting to find the right time to do it, and then of course today, these codes come up and it's forcing my hand into doing them. So I'm gonna share with you how we replace the fuel injectors on a first gen Scion XB. This should hold true for any of the 1.5 liter 1NZ engines, but this in particular is in a first gen Scion XB. And the way that I read these codes, this is the torque app on my radio, and this is going through a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor. Uh, I think this radio is pretty cool. It's essentially just an Android tablet in my car, so it has all the regular Android functions. Of course, I have the torque app, which immediately told me what the issue was. Uh, of course, the link to buy this stuff, like usual, like any other YouTuber, it's gonna be down in the description. All right, so let's get to actually working. Okay, so in front of you, this is everything that we're gonna need to do this job. Namely, the most important part is going to be the injectors themselves. Now, I opted to go for rebuilt injectors. I know, I know, people are gonna comment, oh, you gotta use brand new Denso injectors on everything, you gotta use brand new parts and everything, but look, it's a $2,000 car, brand new injectors are over 100 bucks a piece, rebuilt ones are 10 bucks a piece, it's gonna work good enough. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need our new injectors, we're gonna need a small screwdriver, we're gonna need socket, socket set, some gloves, uh, this is optional, but I like to wear gloves anytime I'm working on stuff. Some towels, because we know we're going to get dirty. And because we're working with fuel, and I can't stress this enough, have your fire extinguisher ready before you start. You don't want to be fumbling around looking for it when the fire's already going. Have this ready, sitting next to you, before you start working with anything with fuel. Also, Make sure that the engine is cold. You don't want fuel spilling on a hot engine and igniting immediately. So we're gonna have this, it's gonna be out of frame, but it's gonna be sitting right next to the car the entire time. First, we're gonna start with some troubleshooting. Now, if you have your engine die on you and you think that it's a fuel issue, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to check over in here is gonna be this fuse right here, the second one from the top, as well as this one. Those control our electronic fuel injection. So if anything's wrong with those two fuses, that is going to disable the fuel injection on the car. We've checked these, both of them are good, so that's not an issue here. And if you're wondering, it's written inside the fuse cover. Okay, so we're gonna proceed with the fuel injector removal. I already know that this one needs injectors. Normally, if you have a misfire, you're gonna start with your coils. There's other videos out there already on how to troubleshoot coils, how to troubleshoot plugs. In this case, those aren't the issue. I've already troubleshooted them. I have new coils and new plugs. They're working just fine. That isn't the issue. That leaves the only other thing that it could be as being fuel injectors themselves or the fuel injector circuit. Now, this car is just shy of 280,000 miles on it. My assumption here is that it's going to be the injectors. The circuit seems to have been working fine because it seems to fire all the time, so it's not a question of whether it's firing or not, it's just not firing as good as it should. So that, again, should be the injectors. So we'll get to taking this apart and installing the new injectors. Now, the first thing before we begin is gonna to be to disconnect our battery. We don't want any power going to these injectors. We're messing with electric plugs. We don't wanna fry the computer unintentionally from shorting out one of these plugs. So we're gonna disconnect the battery. If you wanna be even more safe, 
You can pull the fuse that we already talked about, but disconnecting the battery should be good enough. All right, so the socket that we're gonna need to take the battery off, like any other Japanese product, is gonna be 10 millimeter socket. Okay, our battery's disconnected. Now I'm gonna show you again where the fuse was for the fuel injection system that we can pull just to be on the safe side. So it's this fuse right here, the second one. If you're questioning about it again, you can look at the diagram on top of the fuse block. Inside the engine here, removing the fuel rail, we're gonna have two 12 millimeter bolts and then hit in back in here it's kind of oily and greasy. It's down here on this on this mount right there is a 10 millimeter bolt. So we're going to need to remove those three to get this off. All right, so after we've disconnected the battery, we're going to go in and we're going to remove the four wires leading to the fuel injectors. Sometimes it helps to have a small screwdriver to do this. Plastic can get stiff over a while. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Now it also wouldn't be a bad idea to mark these with tape or a paint pen or however, number them, so that way you remember which one it goes back into. You don't want to wire these backwards because then your ignition's gonna be off. Now we're gonna remove the 12 millimeter bolts holding the fuel rail on. There were two 12 millimeter bolts out. Fuel rails loose. But to get it out enough, we have to remove that 10 millimeter bolt that's on the side over here. All right, so we're going to proceed here. I know it's difficult to see. The bolt is going to be right down in there on the side. Be perfect to share what knowledge you do have. Now, due to my own ineptitude, I forgot to record the important bit of actually removing the injectors, so we're doing this again. Be completely transparent to you, but the adept amongst you may recognize that there is a stud missing here that was there before and has since been lost to time, so it will not be getting replaced. So back on track. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the other stud. Now there would normally be two studs here, but I only got one. So we're removing that, we're putting it aside for safekeeping. Next, we're going to grab our small screwdriver and we're going to remove the wire harnesses to each of the coils. Again, if you want to mark these, you remember where they go. So I'm gonna pull that wiring harness out of the way. Now, with our 
two 12 millimeter bolts removed and the 10 millimeter bolt on the other side. We can lift up our fuel rail and see our wonderful, wonderful injectors. Bring you in closer so you can see this. There they are. All four of them in their glory. Now one thing I did notice, factory OEM Azen logo. Which, seen as when I bought this car, had a cheap as shit non-OEM Fram oil filter on it. And this is an OEM part. That leads me to assume that this, these are the original fuel injectors. This vehicle has 280,000 miles on it. You can imagine how cruddy they are. Just look at the gunk that is gathered around them. So anywho, next we're going to go about replacing these. Here's where you may spill fuel all over yourself and you may need the fire extinguisher. So far so good. <laughs> Okay, so these are the injectors that we pulled out. Pretty cruddy, pretty cruddy. Like I said, they have the factory Azen mark right there, which is the OEM for these. But they are doity. Now, one thing we're going to want to check for is that one, two, three, four of the bottom O-rings are there, and four of the top O-rings are there. One, two, three, four. That's just to make sure that we don't leave one inside of the fuel rail or inside of the engine when we go to install our new ones. Now we return to the engine, we're going to install our new injectors. You can see our fuel rail here. with one, two, three, and four openings. We're going to take our injector, the end nearest the connector. Oh, that's great light. Goes into the fuel rail. that's all four of our injectors back in the fuel rail. I'm going to take a rag here just to make sure everything's clean before going back in. It's the old dirty engine so there's a good amount of gunk around and we don't want that to end up plugging up our brand new injectors or getting down into the engine. So this one, this one down here at the bottom is going to be the one I'm looking at. That light sucks. That light doesn't suck. Carefully. Slowly and carefully get this back in. Make sure the injectors are seated in the proper holes. Sometimes they can be out of the line. Now we're going to put our 12 millimeter bolts back in those holes. Just gonna put them loose for now to hold the injectors in their place. Don't.
So we just have those down snug for now. We're gonna come back and retighten them in a second. But first we wanna make sure that we can get our 10 millimeter bolt back on this side before we go tightening anything down. So let's grab that bolt and our 10 millimeter socket. So we're getting back to working on it here. Now there's something I need to point out. On the fuel line, right there, you can see it right here. There's a black plastic clip. Now, this clip doesn't hold on that tight. It comes off real easy, and if it comes off, the fuel line will come off and spray fuel everywhere. Make sure you have that clip. It can come off when you move this fuel line. Just spent an hour looking for it. So, it's important. It can come off real easy and you wouldn't even know it. And that could ruin your day pretty quickly. Okay, so back to what we were doing. We've got our new injectors installed. Our bolts are in, not tight, but they're in. But now we can go back to wiring, plug our coils back in. Coils are plugged back in. So we plug our fuel injectors back in. Now, if you didn't mark these, it should be pretty obvious which one goes where because the wire lengths are different, as well as the color of the plastic on the clips coincides with the color of the plastic on the coils. So black plastic there, black plastic there, gray plastic there, gray plastic there, black plastic there, black plastic there, gray plastic there, gray plastic there. So they should match. Now we're gonna come in and Tighten this. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit so that it's lined up. Now there's supposed to be a little flange that keeps that indexed, but the little flange is broken on mine, but that's okay. Those are tight. We're going to go through and inspect now, again, that each of our injectors is seated in the hole. I'll give her a little a little wiggly poo. All of our electrical and fuel connections are made. Now we're gonna go back to putting the fuse back in the fuse block and reconnecting the battery. This 15 amp fuse goes right there. Put the cap, Put the fuse block back on. Now we're going to reattach our battery leads. All right, everything's back together. Time to start her up. I'm going to leave the camera out here to record this just in case anything goes wrong. You can see it and I can see it to go back and figure out what went wrong and fix it.
We don't see any fuel leaks. Everything's sounding like it's running appropriately. We go inside and make sure no codes pop up. All right, so we're inside. We're gonna fire up our torque app here with the engine running. Give it a second to connect. It's connected. We have RPM. Scan for fault codes. No fault codes! How about that? No more misfire. That is how you fix a misfire and replace fuel injectors on a Scion XB first gen. Got, you know, having one of these claw tools or a good magnet is just indispensable. Hey guys, while you watch the blooper reel of me trying to find a stud that fell down in the engine, I just wanted to take the time to thank you for sitting down and spending the time to watch this video. As always, any of the items that I've used, tools, parts, whatever, camera, is going to be listed down in the description if you'd like to get one for yourself. If you buy something from there, like any of the other YouTube channels, it helps pay me back a little bit for making these videos. Now this is just the second video that I've made so far. So if you have any comments, suggestions, things I'd do different, things you'd like to see in the future, please leave a comment down below. And I plan on making more of these videos pretty quickly, get some more content out there. So subscribe, please, if you'd like to see more of these auto repair videos. Okay, have a good day. Thanks.